hey, it's time for a recent game for once. Huzzah. That's the best game publisher name ever. <laughs> yeah, Mad Max games. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I, I actually really wanted to play this before we did the commentary, uh, but real life got in the way. Uh, I bought the game, and I was gonna, I was gonna like binge it after work today, but then my mother decided she wanted to, to take this weekend to take me to the dealership so I could finally get my own goddamn car. And uh, well, that 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 took like four fucking hours De dealing do. with car dealing with car salesman is more arduous than actually climbing a mountain oh no the uh the place i went to which is if anyone's curious uh barlow chevrolet on route 130 and um in my general area uh there it's it's like one of those rare car dealerships that very uh, deliberately does not try to hustle you <laughs> so it was all very <laughs> it was all very stress-free it was just time consuming because i had to deal with everything but uh, back to the video game that we're playing. For the record, uh, the sprite work in this game is freaking gorgeous. I I need to say, like, uh, it's everything's so fluidly animated and detailed is the big thing. Like, there's almost like a physics simulation with uh, Madeline's hair. So it's like they're trying to pull a Pixar and show off <laughs> with it. Well, yeah, it's that kind of um, it's that kind of animation. A work that you'd normally expect from an SNK game, although the uh, sprite. Speaking uh, of what came just before this, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh. the, the, the sprite work though, the sprite style is more. Uh, it's, I want to say it's kind of like a in between, like an eight and sixteen bit kind of style. Like it's it's kind of like. It's kind of like late PC gaming, uh, late sprite based PC gaming, I should say, not like. Uh, really late P PC gaming, but the stuff that they were doing when PCs were catching up with consoles uh, and could actually do side-scrollers worth a damn at last. That kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, this is also a game like, you would think that a pretty straightforward platformer like this wouldn't actually have a good story, but this is honestly one of the best storytelling games I've seen in a really, really, really long time. Like, you can well, ignore the story, a, it, but you shouldn't. It tackles a very weird subject matter for games, is the thing. Yeah. What is that? Uh, mental health. <laughs> Men yeah, mental oh. health. Yeah, so... Oh, we're getting Hellblade up in here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but it's, it's surprisingly grounded, considering the way that it explores its subject matter, which will make more sense once we get to part two. Um... But the writing's just not only very funny, but the characters feel very real, which is another important thing. Like Theo here, I love him, and as he has his own he has his own Instagram page. <laughs> and I'm so you see, here's the thing: the the character select screen has the portrait of Madeline on the left. So I was convinced there was a way to unlock Theo as a playable character, but I don't think that nope. that's the case. At least as of maybe, now. Maybe maybe DLC later. I would love to have Theo playable as DLC because he is he's hilarious. He's and he's also, like, you might think that he's kind of a one-off joke, because he's like, oh, selfies, lol, I use Leetspeak. But he's actually, especially when you get to later games, he's much more well-developed than that, and he's more than just a comic relief character as well, which I always appreciate. My first exposure to this game in any kind of gaming press capacity was through an article or two that were, pra that were praising it for being very nice about being a hard game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically, the, the game does keep track of how many times you you die. Um, and the game tries... And it's, fun, and it's fun to compare with friends. <laughs> it's fun to compare with friends. Ryan is much better at this game than I am, as he is with most. Well, it, 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 it's, it's, it's almost like I've been playing platformers since I was three years old, and I'm 28 now. Does the Shadow Madeline have a name? Or is it just her other half? Her other, her other self, yeah. Yeah. She is one of the best villains in a game like this I think I could ever like I could ever really think you're of. not me you're not like honestly she kind of is very persona like but not <laughs> not but not exactly because she's not just destructive and evil as you'll find out later in the game but um okay so yeah. Need a hobby, but mountain climbing. <laughs> mountain climbing, you know, like, I know these two other guys that might be a little bit better at this, but they haven't had a game in oh, how many years now? 30 years. 30 years, yeah. 
That, that would have been fun, though. If, that would be fun, though, if there was, like, for the Switch version, it, since Nintendo's big on indies, like, have an Ice Climbers character. <laughs> or at like, least the costume, you know, where you get, like, yeah. the, the fuzzy parka hood. That would have been great. Yeah. I mean, this is, game is, this is a literal game about climbing a mountain. Oh, I, for, I forgot That's that. That's pretty you... cute. The the hair drops out of the the text oh, box. Remember, remember that for later. I guess is yeah. all I'll say. Is, is Shadow, what's her name? Madeline. Shadow Madeline. She's we, we're She's we're safe. Now. We're safe now. Probably. Totally safe. Probably safe. Nothing bad could possibly happen now. Like who even runs this kind of thing anyway? Like we're just. In Why some... is there an information booth on the mountain? Also, fun fact, this game's Canadian, and this game's very proud to be Canadian. So, fun fact about Madeline Special's tell all later, she doesn't have a smartphone. She doesn't, oh yeah, she doesn't have a smartphone. Even though this game's supposed to take place at basically in modern days, and I think they never really say how old she's supposed to be. Um, I assume she's in her mid-twenties. Early to mid-twenties Early to mid -20s is what I say, because she talks about drinking in a later cutscene. Um, yeah. so, yeah, so it's like, what kind of 20-year-old doesn't have a cell phone? Why are you climbing this mountain? Slasher sting. <laughs> <laughs> and madly gets eaten by telephone pole demon. The end. <laughs> wow, that was a short playthrough. <laughs> that that sequence there really did uh, scare me the first time I played. Nope, we're not dead. It was all, it was all a dream. A dream. So wait a minute. So then why didn't the times we died in the dream wake us up earlier? Then I want my speedrun strats where you die immediately at the start of the level in order to get to the end quicker. Gosh, game. Jeez. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I forgot about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, Madeline's uh, emotes are so are so great for Twitter reaction posts. Like that picture, I have that picture of her just looking really, really annoyed on my phone, <laughs> just <laughs> just in case I ever need it. So, is this guy the old man? Then, do we get to steal his apple? <laughs> old man? No, he's he's like barely older than Madeline. You know, Mr. Hotel Owner here won't ever let us leave. <laughs> Uh, I, this might, uh, story-wise, this might be one of my favorite chapters in the game, even though it doesn't add to the plot, really, at all. Um, oh god, I forgot how creepy what that the was. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mr. Oshiro. Mr. Oshiro, um, is, I think, he's a, re this character god, um, gee, <laughs> sorry. Celestial Resort Hotel. Two guests in one day. Business is finally picking up. Yeah, we might actually be able to pay to keep the lights on for five minutes. Hold on, is that supposed to be black mold? Um, it's just evil. It's you'll kind of find out more about it later in the stage, but it's it's just goop. <laughs> You know, I never saw them as meatballs before, but now I, I can't not see them as, as meatballs. Uh, uh, Power of positive thinking. Sure. <laughs> Aw, how helpful. Unfortunately, we'll be learning later the idiom of don't keep others warm by letting yourself by setting yourself on fire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's kind of implied to be something she does a lot, basically. Yeah. Um, which is part of what makes her... A very relatable character to anybody who has ever had a mental health issue before. Like, honestly, I don't think that... I can't think... I'm sure there have been other games, but I can't think of many... And there certainly have been many games that use metaphors for things like depression and anxiety before. But I can't think of many games where it's like the... Not even subtext, just straight up the text of the game is about this kind of stuff. So if Theo dashes, does that mean that his beard suddenly shaves? Because <laughs> if so, then uh, uh, Matt makes games. Call me. What is it? <laughs> is that the completionist's version of an air dash? <laughs> <laughs> he does kind of look like Gerard now that you mention it. Yeah, kind of. Yes. What's that? <laughs> uh, th that stick I've got over there. It was doing a great job. Right, stick? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Madeline, Madeline is a pretty good snarker. Yeah, she is... <laughs> 
she's multi-layered, which is another thing I like about it. Which is, yeah. again, you know, a, a kind I of... I like how Theo's face is upside down. <laughs> uh, I love the... De again, like, the detail that games like this and Shovel Knight put into the, the text and, like, how certain things will wiggle and everybody's got a different voice sound effects to how they're... To, I, I, that's one thing I really love when game developers do, and it's, it's odd how indie titles with a really small team like this, like a team of like six people can put that much effort into these sorts of small things. Hang on, is, is, is Oshiro having a golem moment? Yeah, he's, he's, he's freaking out and talking to himself. And yeah, so this is the, this is kind of the point where I really started to, not like, like him as a character, but, um... When you realize that he, that all the black meatballs are his anxieties literally pouring out of him, and you see how many are all over the the hotel already, like that was like a kind of an oh shit moment for me, where you realize just how freaked out this character is all the time, and that really hit home for me personally. Like that was one of the it's it's such a Oops. small moment, but that was one of the most kind of powerful parts of the game for me there there's a lot of points like that in there and this is a relatively small one all things considered but when you realize that he freaked out every single time you see one of these meatballs uh float they, they need a better name than meatballs uh i don't know what else to call them uh i don't yeah i don't know um meatballs meatballs so did any of you guys watch uh on like foxbox slash for kids tv there was this Shonen show that was like Pokemon slash Yu-Gi-Oh, but they were chefs, and the there was a kid and he had a group of meatballs that he used to fight people what? or something. <laughs> nope, don't know what even know what you're talking about. Okay, it was like one of those Fox Box shows they showed at like six thirty in the morning after Ultimate Muscle. Well, later on once we yeah say one last night. Dark subtext. Dark subtext. Oh, see, I want to talk. Oh, I, I, I want to talk more, but you know, I, since I haven't played this game, I I find myself just reading the story. The story <laughs> is really <laughs> really good. Like, on yeah. it's one of the one of the best I've played in a long time, and it, you, you you do see a lot of it's it's simultaneously very indie. Like, it's the kind of story that you really would only see. An indie studio try to <laughs> tackle. <laughs> We've. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that that was just that. Was, uh, I know that feeling where you screw up and then you're so frazzled for the moment. You immediately mess this, up again. You, you immediately mess up again. Oh, yes. this 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 game is also a champion of. Hey, look! I got <laughs> almost to the end on my first try, and now suddenly I can't do. Oh my first, god! So I hate <laughs> that! I hate that so much! Oh, I can't tell you how many times that happened to me, especially in B sides, where you get to the end of the room your first time, you die, and then you suddenly forget how you're supposed to do the rest of the stage, and you're there for 15 minutes. Ugh. Uh, no, not really. You didn't have to say anything. Oh, good. I was going to do that anyway. Man, I was, like, sleep-baked out of my mind yesterday. <laughs> I didn't realize the obvious Shining reference is the haunted hotel on a snowy mountain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh... So apparently there was supposed to be another section kind of like this with the hot springs later on where there would be a lot of swimming, and apparently the developer said, wait a minute, nobody likes water levels, why are we putting one into our in game? game. <laughs> and then they cut it, basically. Which is fine, because I think this is a good length for a main campaign. Yeah, for an title. I think like one more level wouldn't have made it drag at all, but there is a, oh god, yeah, this guy is freaky, for the record. Um, you can't jump on him, though. You can't jump on him, and it makes a comical, like, boink <laughs> sound effect. <laughs> Crazy old lady, how'd you get here? And she, um, so if she dashes, does her hair get her color back then afterwards? Well, her dash is about one foot and she hurts her back doing so. <laughs> uh, so that, um, but she has infinite stamina, so she just climbs the hard way. A few crows short of a murder. That's, um, 
an interesting way of putting it. No, she's not quite insane, but she's very weird. Yeah, she she brings that up that she had to you have to be a little nutty to choose to live somewhere like this, <laughs> basically. How many years do you think it'll be before people can talk these kind of meme lines and not sound ridiculous? Um, in, in stories, I mean. I don't know. It's kind of one of those things where whenever you try to use lingo that is actually modern, you feel like you're going to be dated, is the thing. Like, if you try to... <laughs> oh, I love this scene. Um, but it's like, if you actually try to use language that people used in, like, the 90s or whatever... It sounds ridiculous, because nobody talks like that anymore, but there was a time when people actually did talk like that. It's weird, because we expect different things in stories than what we expect in real life. We Something can be completely realistic writing-wise in, in a... in real... Oh, God. Oh, wow! Oh, I only just noticed the... They use these little things on the side Is she to having get... a panic attack? Yes, yes she, she is. is. <laughs> Basically. Um, this is when they just straight up confirm that she has massive anxiety problems. And the way that they portray it in the game uh, is honestly, like, perfect. Like, if you know somebody who wants to understand what it's like to go through an anxiety disorder or a panic attack, then this is a great kind of game to show them to get them to understand what it's like. Because it's, oh. it's really... It's honestly, at some points so powerful it can be overwhelming like it's uh certainly more effective than that crap they did in the sao anime uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that uh, just did not work in animated form i'm sorry nope uh and it's um what's actually really cool is is that this feather thing is, I believe, kind of you actually are controlling it you are controlling it but i believe it is also based off of several um, distraction slash coping techniques that real psychology things use. Like, they tell people who are actually... Like, maybe not the specific feather metaphor, but they do kind of... This is very similar there are, to that. There are, there are several uh, techniques, so to say. Like, Jessica Jones has that thing where she repeats street signs. Oh, yeah. That kind of thing. <laughs> I forgot that that's all. <laughs> they got that selfie. Uh, but at least before September, a lot of sites don't remember that it was actually released that year. So, because... You're... Unless you're, like, a really big name game. Yeah, like Zelda, for example. Like... She sees uh, the mirror and she's uh... just like, uh-oh. Is the flickering sprite your capture, or does that happen in the game? I do not remember. Okay, because I don't remember that happening there, but I'm not sure. It doesn't particularly matter. Oh no, he dropped his cell phone. Like, seem to assume that, you know, that you, developers will run out of new things to do with game design. So you need new different types of games rather than more games in the same genre. I disagree. I mean... We're, how many years has it been since Mario won? 33. 33 years. Jesus Christ. Damn. We're <laughs> if, still... you want to go even, if you want to go even longer, the first real platformer in the sense of what we yeah, know no, as today was Side scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, damn it. No. <laughs> uh, well, I, I saw where I, show, I showed you where it is. So <laughs> I technically don't need to get it. It doesn't uh, really matter. So. Uh, your heart wasn't in it, Ryan. I wasn't in the heart, you mean. Eh? <laughs> Benefit of actually being funny. You know, like, that's the kind of <laughs> game where you watch other people play it, and it's actually and amusing. <laughs> yeah, that, but yeah. you know, you can also say that for I Am Bread. Uh, so. Like, I mean, there's there's something amusing about you jumping onto a random platform, and then you doing the spinning kick just suddenly kills you out of nowhere. It's meaner when it's just like a random spike trap. You know, Ugh. I never really saw the appeal. Just like I don't see the appeal of I Am Bread, a bandwagon before that was even in vogue. So. Oh man, I love that. I love that part of the the stage though, where you actually. What could... in the name of hell was that? That's. We're in hell. <laughs> um. So again, like this game is just genius in many ways, and how they, and how they do it.
Because this then we wouldn't have a game otherwise. <laughs> Don't you love it when you just Although, argue with yourself over and over? Because that doesn't I mean, happen this in is, real life. This is partially what it's yeah like regarding a lot of these mental issues. You really are fighting with yourself about all these things. Yeah, it's it can be rough. <laughs> Die, monster. <laughs> uh, you don't belong in this game. Oh my gosh, Ryan, why are you referencing I want to be the guy? God damn it, Ted. <laughs> what are, what are you going to... Where are you going to think Zero Wing is from May Mace? <laughs> oh, man. That is that um, is true, but we're... Um, when most platformers kind of base, whether you like it or not, base themselves off of Super Mario Brothers then you're kind of expected to have like a like a goomba something to jump on <laughs> Some... that moves <laughs> yeah, yeah. enemies and platformers are kind of just an extension of the obstacles but... yeah and well they were until people started trying to turn them into fucking beat them up pick people of course you could murder like uh, 12 fucking soldiers or or vault cops uh, but this one guy at the end of the the area, it's suddenly a moral choice whether or not you want to kill him. <laughs> uh. Oh, I really, for example, uh, again, like I was talking about Theo earlier. Like one thing that I really like is, again, this game does symbolism in an interesting way where they're talking about what the temple makes them see. And for Theo, it's eyes kind of on him all the time. Which, again, kind of ties into the, like, him posting on Instagram or whatever the hell they call it in this game. Instapix. <laughs> Instapix, where it's just, like, he kind of craves validation in a lot of ways. So, like, all these <laughs> eyes are staring at him. And the game never spells it out, and it's not important for you to pick that up. But, again, I, you can read between the lines. And I find, again, it's... Symbolism, I think, is kind of looked down upon a lot in games because it's usually so goddamn obvious but they keep on rubbing it in your face anyway. Like, do you understand? We're being smart here. Do you see? Yeah. Do so you I, see? I, I take it that he knows someone named Alex who has similar issues. Yeah, that's his... Uh, we'll system. get into Alex during the visual novel part of this movie. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, no. Nah. It, it, it's, it, it's more an expression that it's that it's it, it's beyond what what the experience can take. It's It's a distortion. It's not just... A rise and challenge. It's it hits the ceiling and it breaks the flow. It breaks the feel. That's what a difficulty spike is. Yeah, like a, uh, the next level can be like it's like if the next level can be harder, but it's not to the point where you want to throw your controller and turn the game off. It's just harder, you know, because that's what the next level should be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not leaving you behind. Hell no, you better not leave me behind. The, the, the... Yeah, like you don't need to throw them up there, but you can to hit that switch. Yeah. Um. Like, I think what I ended up doing yeah, here's there... Yeah, the, here's the strawberry, which I'll be getting to. Oh, yeah, that's... I think <clears throat> I think the first time I... Oh, yeah, because you have to jump on him, yeah, throw Theo throw into Theo the thing <laughs> in order to get it. Uh, oop. Oh! Nope, nope, he <laughs> fell into the pit. Uh, you, you killed like me, how... Madeline, for a strawberry? <laughs> Damn it! I like how Madeline just explodes the moment he dies, like her life yeah. force is tied to his. <laughs> Essentially. Uh, it's okay. We can respawn however many times we want. We're fine. So <laughs> now you're frazzled. <laughs> yep. Oh. Depending on your skill, of course. Yeah. So it's like, wow. <laughs> I love that. Now you're just showing off. Now you're just showing. Okay. So. But that's it. I'm not going for any other cold strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man. Yeah. Momentum. I forgot that even 2D games can have physics engines now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It will continue to go forward as it falls, but most things... I can't be the only person who, upon seeing this game, thought Celeste must be the name of the character. Nope, it's the name of the mountain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently well, there is a real-life but... Mount Celeste in uh, Canada, too, that they base this on. Mm. And people... To Canada, then. <laughs> And people have now left snarky reviews on the mountain about how it keeps on trying to kill them on, like, Google and stuff. <laughs> so what happens here as far as purple hair goes? Uh, so purple hair isn't really technically around all the time. She basically just manifests herself from time to time because she's basically just a representation of her anxieties, pretty much. 
So whenever Madeline gets like really anxious or whatever, or there's spooky magic crap going on, she'll pop up. But she won't always be there. Like when she's just talking to Theo right now, she's pretty calm. So she's not really around at this point. Uh, we do see her later in this part though. Oh, okay. Yeah. One thing I also do like, too, is, is that she doesn't really feel like she has a reason to climb the mountain. It's just so that she can prove that she can do something to herself. Which And it, and it has to be something hard. Yeah, which I, I think makes sense, because a lot of the times we do things without really having a reason a lot of the time in real life. like My brain focuses on these stupid things that happened forever ago. I should be over them. That is the most real thing ever. I'm sorry. I've had those moments. You want to know... Let's do something really scary. Yes, let's go. Let's go to bed early and be alone with our thoughts. Oh, <laughs> uh, remember that one time in fourth grade where you accidentally called someone a booger, but you didn't mean it, and you felt really bad, and you said sorry, but they were still upset. Man, there are there there are embarrassing things that I did like well over 10, 15 years ago that sometimes my brain will just latch on to for some reason. Happens to everyone. Yeah, it's the it's the worst. And get mad at people. Also, <laughs> on the internet. That is also the most real thing. <laughs> yeah, so if you choose the I should get some sleep option, you just skip all this and then go to bed, basically. I think if you choose enough dialogue, that option goes away because the game <laughs> realizes. <laughs> That's the best answer. <laughs> uh. Therapy session. Man, I wish that therapy was just easy as going to a mountain and talking to someone uh, like I, I also wish it didn't cost as much <laughs> well i mean this is canada so she probably or a therapist probably, probably would be has. covered on her insurance wait oh wait no it would be free because canada has free health care man well i mean to be fair though canada might have free health care but it also has demon ghost mountains so does that even where itself trade out? off <laughs> yeah where they trade off hmm. it's easier to avoid a mountain than hospital bills <laughs> <laughs> Good point. And if you do need the hospital bills after climbing the mountain, at least they're free. So, you know. Yep. <laughs> so, like, whenever I see someone talking about depression in depth, they always have to resort to these kind of really flowery descriptions of stuff. Trying it's, un to... it's unfortunately one of those things that's just impossible to really explain because it happens to everyone differently. Yeah. yeah. But if you, but the only way to really understand it is to go through it itself uh, yourself, when which I, is not. When I think <laughs> depression, I generally think of uh, more of a, a slump than crying sessions. Crying, I usually associate with actually letting your feelings out. And that <laughs> that's basically like the like they're. Like, I mean, obviously, if you're depressed, you probably will have a, a bout of crying every once in a while. But for a lot of people, like, it's just kind of like laying on the bed, staring at the ceiling and not doing It's anything. almost entirely an internal <laughs> thing, so. Yeah, I mean, grant, again, it, it does happen to every different person uh, differently. But sometimes somebody can be severely depressed, but still able to, like, go to work or whatever and put in the bare minimum. It's not, it's... It varies so drastically from person to person that you can't... There's Metaphors no... and are kind of necessary in order to explain it to someone. Yeah, in order to explain your experience, at the very least. Yeah. Because you can't literally get inside their head and feel what it's like. Yeah, unfortunately, real uh, in real life, purple uh, manifestations of your emotional issues don't pop out to explain their how they exist to everyone else. So, you know... That kind of sucks. Man, what a Shovel Knight ripoff sitting at a campfire. Didn't they know that Shovel Knight invented that? Shovel Knight invented campfires, yeah. The Boy <laughs> yeah. Scouts. <laughs> Boy Scouts traveled back in time after playing Shovel Knight and stole the concept. And then the caveman, the caveman traveled forward in time and stole it further back. Little did you know that the monolith from 2001 A Space Odyssey is just a boxed copy of Shovel Knight. <laughs> that's sp <laughs> <laughs> that's spark <laughs> uh. now Stonehenge was in fact 
a very primitive attempt to build a supercomputer that could run Crisis, but all it could run was Shovel Knight, so... Alright, if, if it could run Shovel Knight before, like, asteroids, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> we still don't know what Stonehenge is. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it probably was just rocks, basic. What if it was just natural? Like, what if rocks just happened to fall there? You know, <laughs> in a perfect circle. <laughs> it, could, it, it could. Weirder, weirder things have happened. Yes. <laughs> in a repeated pattern that looks like gateway arches. No. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be uh, funny if that did. If that was the actual explanation, it's just one big coincidence. But uh, the actual explanation probably isn't even all that interesting. Nah, it probably was just like... It's just not knowing that gets people to think about it, you know? Yeah, probably. The human brain does not do well with the lack of resolution. Yeah, you know, is Stonehenge 720p, 4K? We'll never know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently Celeste being a haunted creep land is pretty well known. It, I wonder if that's based off if, like, the actual... Like, the actual mountain in Canada huh. has a reputation for being haunted. Although, granted, almost everything has a it's, reputation for being haunted, pretty much. It's, it, it's, it's so weird, though. Like, we've got this snowy mountain with a hotel on it that, that might be a reference to The Shining. But the story plays out more like Silent Hill, which was a reference to The Shining anyway. <laughs> and then Silent Hill had Kindergarten Cop in it. <laughs> Uh, let's take a, let me take a selfie. Do, do, Wait, does that, does that optionally pop up if you ask all the questions? Yes, it well, does. Well, most of them. Yes, it does. Um, I think you can skip a handful, maybe, if you do things right, but, again, you can just, I think, press, press start at any point and skip the cutscene anyway. the cutscene. So, if you don't care, or just going for speed, or whatever, <laughs> don't jinx it. Uh, oh my lord, what is happening up there in the sky? Aurora that Borealis is called at this time of day, located entirely on top of a Dalton mountain. Yes, that's where it usually happens. Can we climb and see? <laughs> purple hair says no. <laughs> Aw, hi, purple hair. Pseudo 3D. <laughs> Ooh. It's okay that you're a jerk. I'm just gonna kill you now. <laughs> Or leave you all alone. Back. Uh, oh god. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That that freaked me the hell out when she started creeping out of the the box there the first time I. Ringu. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah. Jesus. Yeah, feather time. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how we solve our problems. I'm guessing it moves more erratically this time. Um, sort of. No. No, it's, it moves at the same pace, actually, because it's all about... But you'll see. Yeah, you'll see. It's trying about trying to calm down, and... Yeah, nope. that, it gets harder, though, is the thing, because the feather... Yeah, sometimes anxiety and depression shit happen, and no matter of stuff will help you get through that actually happening is the thing. Yeah, uh, I think the interesting thing about this... Oh, now, no! Free falling! Oh, free this is, like, the old uh, symbolic How come the spikes by? aren't killing me now? How can I survive several miles fall with... Like, oh, we land... Actually, no, the water would probably kill us upon kill landing there. <laughs> huh. What, is she already down at the base of the mountain? Is that what's uh, happened here? So, basically, Jeez. we've fallen below the base of the mountain, basically. So, we're technically lower than even where we were at the beginning of the game, pretty much. Now, this is actually a really interesting uh, moment, because... Uh, I think this is the main point of the the whole two uh, Madeline's thing. She has this moment of seeming inspiration where she's talking like, 
she just needs to leave this behind. And it looks eff that was painful. It, it looks for a moment. It looks for a moment like it's going to work, but then it just doesn't. Yeah, and it's it's kind of one of the big messages about the game in general is is that getting over depression, anxiety, what have you is Well, one you don't ever truly get over it. Yeah, that's true, but let's just say coping with it is not as simple as just like, oh, like pretending that it's not there. For it's example, not it's just a matter of the, the, the of the game making a statement about coping with it or how hard it is. It's also just an expression of something that frequently does happen to people who are dealing with these kind of issues. Namely, you might have those moments where you think you've got a handle on it. You think you have permanently cured yourself even. But, you know, a lot of the time that's going to be kind of a false stop. Yeah. It's it's and... basically that the game's big message is about how learning how to live with it as opposed to learning how to get rid of it which is actually kind of because you can't because you can't get rid of it yeah that's actually again like a, a lot of what uh like if you talk to a therapist or whatever a lot of the time that's kind of what they're kind of teaching you to do because you can't get rid of it so much as you can learn to live with it pretty much it's basically right. the only way to really do it yeah thinking about it considering the whole depression thing i i am kind of uh, like I'm kind of understanding the decision to to have the game be really really nice about being a hard game. Yes. Because well, I mean it, that that's part of like the story in that battling this as Ted mentioned it is hard in that you're also going to <laughs> not succeed a lot. Yeah. No, that's that's not I'm not talking about that. Oh. I'm talking about the decision to make it really nice about being a hard game was probably at least partly in service to the idea that if you're making a game about depression and anxiety, you're probably going to get a lot of players who have depression and anxiety issues. So making it a game that uh, discourages is not necessarily a good idea if you want to keep your player base around. <laughs> you know? So you're there's... going to exhaust them, even if they aren't necessarily the type to be... It automatically put off by it. So there's a line coming up, I believe in this level actually, where you're talking to the the old lady again and she says there's nothing to feel bad about with taking a break and coming back later. Like she's talking about like you don't have to go uh cl she's telling Madeline at that point that you don't have to climb the mountain all in one go, which is basically the game saying it's all right if you can't handle this now, like if you can't beat the game now because you can come back later and try again. Which, again, is a, a, a metaphor for the depression angle, but also, like, a lot of games will make you kind of feel bad for not playing them or for giving up on them or whatever, like, or not beating them or up. Oh, <laughs> I've done that, too. We, or, uh, uh, yourself. Like, or uh, what was it, We Fit, where, well, if it isn't bloody blah, I haven't seen you in 10,000 months. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. Or, like, well, the, the big we, one is Animal Crossing, you know, where well, it's just we, like, oh, we, you we, haven't been we, here in forever, everyone's gone, we hate you. We, we Fit kind of has a reason to be that way, though, because if you Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm poking fun at it. Yeah, if, if you don't keep up with... With, a, with an exercise routine, you're not going to get anything out of it. Yeah, um, basically. But some other games, you know, like, you you feel bad if you feel like you can't beat it and you give up on it. Like, sometimes it's not even the game that, that does it. It's more like yourself. It's just like, oh, you feel bad about having 16,000 games in your backlog that you never finished or whatever, you know? Man, I've got way too many open world RPGs. Way too many. Yeah. So this game kind of... It, it. I like that that there's dialogue in the game that's not shaming you for like, okay, if this is still too tough for you, there's nothing... You don't need to feel bad about taking a break from it, you know? Like, you can always... It's always it will always be there for you to come back. Especially since it's a digital game and not physical, so you can't sell it back to GameStop. Ha ha, bitches. We have your money. Uh, wait, <laughs> I think that's not the point they were trying to make. But <laughs> <laughs> the uh, other thing, though, is that um, is that sometimes taking a break is the best medicine for uh, a tough game. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, I mean that's a pretty common thing in fighting or very competitive games. Oh, ooh, where you dude. kind or you kind of plateau, and the best thing to do is to try to push it is to take a bit of a break and unlearn some of the stuff. 
yeah, like, when I've, I've been playing a lot of Splatoon lately, and, you know, you lose game after game after game, it's really frustrating, and you, you kind of have that mental thing of, okay, I gotta play until I win at least one, but you're going to be way more angrier after you win that one game after five more losses than if you just turn the game off after, let's say, three in a row, and you're like, okay, I'm just not on top of my game at the moment, I'll come back tomorrow, basically. You need to... Take, stepping back and realizing that it is just a game and you're doing it for fun and if you're not having fun you shouldn't be playing is something important to to learn basically like yeah that and you know just unless you're doing what we do and we have to play some shitty games for you guys as amusement but <laughs> well take taking a break even a short one can sometimes just be what you need to get past a specific challenge it's 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 hard to to talk about why because there's no not really any one reason but there have been a lot of times when I've gotten stuck in a game a specific challenge and I've just put it down for 15 minutes and then come back and gotten it on my first try it's it's weird it it simultaneously feels really good and really annoying when you do that though because it's like you spend an hour on something you take a day <laughs> off you come back you get it on your first try you're like why did that give me so much trouble. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the line I was talking about. Like someday you'll ready and you'll be ready and you can come back, basically. Like I mean this lady is kind of a jerk, but you know. I'm pretty sure most people here are familiar with the traditional like um, introduction, rising action, climax, falling action, story curve. Like, I'm pretty sure that that's basic middle school English. I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with that. Um, this game, in a lot of movies and games, the climax is at the very, very, very end of the story. Like, the last 30 minutes is the climax, and then, you know, like... There's Love this track, by the way. <laughs> oh, it is so good. Uh... Yes. Now it's time to talk it out. Yeah, we need to, we just need to, if we would all just talk to each other, video games would be a lot less violent. Yeah, but seriously though, this game does pretty much feel like a horror game in many spots. Like, especially with Shadow Madeline at certain points, like especially level 5 and earlier parts in this stage. It's surprisingly effective and probably, I wouldn't say... Maybe not scary is best, basically the the best word for it, so maybe the word horror isn't the best term, but it's... Hugs. Hugs. Aw. And so Madeline awakens her persona. Uh, kind of. Basically. Because <laughs> you get the ability to dash twice now <laughs> when you level up. Break oh, her up. Pink. Yeah, yep. so you can now dash twice in the air. <laughs> basically. Huh. Oh, wow, there actually was a part of you that's like, I thought you were just being symbolic and crap, but no. <laughs> There's a magic... Wait, hold on, if you can fly, then why don't you just fly up to the top? There. It's not that hard. Madeline, I uh, ran I all the way down to, <laughs> to find you. Thanks, pal! Uh, they really, I'm going back up now. They really blurred the line between the dream and the reality with that whole exchange with the Aurora Borealis. Yeah, so, like, it's, at some point you're supposed to ask, like, what's real and what's fake, because if you, um, after, after that sequence, you actually see that Madeline doesn't fall from where she was talking to with the other part of her. She's falling off the ledge where she and Theo were just yeah. talking, uh, earlier. That's another recurring theme with games that deal with these kind of things. Uh, the, the, the blurring of reality and dreaming. Silent Hill 2 does it, Hellblade. Uh, really hammers it in and your gamecube yeah. memory card is now being deleted <laughs> oh, God. Uh, okay so th that's actually something bravely second does too they try to pull that same exact thing and well it's... you know I i'm not talking about about the fourth wall breaking crap i, I kind of consider that a cop-out <laughs> um, that's that's true like i mean uh, yeah, it, it kind of is actually. I mean, trying, trying, about... trying to, trying to blur the line between what the character you're playing as would see as real and what's not. Yeah, that's so something know. like something more along the lines of PT, perhaps. Well, PT is basically the same thing as Silent Hill, <laughs> but well, yeah. Uh, well, yes, I'm just saying it in a more pure gameplay sense. 
Yeah, yeah that, it, that that's that that's that's one thing. So the, the one example modernly, but. The final section. Uh, <laughs> well, that's accidentally use my double dash. Well, that's an nice. anticlimactic way to end the game. There, it's just like, okay, I can finally oh, do God it. Damn it! I can finally do it. I can climb the ah, uh, and then Madeline died. <laughs> that's basically Attack on Titan level of tragedy right there. For the record, I love it. Uh, <laughs> That's a spicy meat ball. Going spicy. back to the point about um, about the game being really nice, about it being hard, tying in with the depression theming. Uh, what did we cover for that? I said um, I said I thought it was a, it was a good decision as far as not alienating yeah. a potentially large chunk of your player base. Yeah. Uh, did any of us did any of us think to mention that it has to do also with not shaming someone for failing to overcome depression on their first try um i i believe we did that i talked about just how we talked about it just in the sense of oh it's it's okay to leave a game behind for a little bit but that does apply to depression as well you you are right because you know, it, this isn't so, this. It can take years for people to even realize that they have a mental illness. So, if you can't like, like uh, you see, that's actually really frustrating for when you're dealing with people like who don't understand what's going on. It's just like, oh, how are you still depressed? You see a therapist, or you're taking your meds. That means you're not depressed anymore, right? And that's really irritating because that's not how it works. It's not like a broken leg where once you put a cast on it it's better it's like no this is something you deal with on an ongoing basis potentially for the rest of your life so yeah don't don't if you're trying to be supportive to someone who has a mental illness don't do that no bad no no <laughs> that of, bad days are going to happen part of it unfortunately has to do with idiom where we have, and you know, I've done this a few times too. I think we all have. Where we use depressed as a synonym for just not happy, being sad uh, that day. Uh... Yeah, yeah, and I mean, unfortunate. Like, there are days when people are going to experience being depressed, but it's not the same as depression. This is just an instance where the English language sucks. Uh, you know, put another <laughs> ding on depressed, that counter. Uh, uh, depressed uh, verb. Versus depression, uh, um, oh, what, what noun <laughs> part of speech is that? Noun, I suppose. Uh, yeah, because, like, saying that's, like, you can call, like, a certain book or movie or song or whatever depressing, but it's not like, oh, this is going to give me actual clinical depression. It's more like, oh, now I feel bad. It's unfortunately just a manner of, yeah, we don't have enough words. Oh, my God, you actually knocked back the, the lanterns. When you well, go we have enough words, but it, it, it's it, it, it's also a matter of clunkiness. Some words just don't sound right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could say this movie is saddening. It sounds overly formal and silly when you say it that way, though. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're like because me, you think, wait, that's actually a real word? <laughs> you can say upsetting, but then you just sound whiny. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> We kind of have words that it's okay to say in certain situations and not in others. Because again, we should be we should be like German, where we just keep adding words consonants on top of other words to make one really long word to do an abstract concept. Isn't that, that sounds basically awful. Basically, how we got to where we are, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but German is even worse about it. Uh, oh, the longest word in like German is like twenty-eight letters or something. Ugh. ugh. Jesus. It's, it's, like, absurdly stupid. When are we all going to evolve past the constraints of confines of language and become telepathic creatures that can just send thoughts to each other that don't need to be put into archaic words? The answer is never. So, oh. <laughs> if you can say supercalifragilisticexpialidocious 20 times fast, uh, we might get there someday. The sound of doing that is positively atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I finally got the, the the hair color changing thing being tied to the dash as a symbolism thing because like red is passion and you need passion to push yourself forward but like her passion comes in bursts 
and then she's depressed. And what's the depressing color? Blue. Oh man, you're, you're you so know? deep. I Symb can't see symbolism. you anymore. Symbolism. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so yeah, they uh, they they got that right at least. <laughs> yeah. So like freaking keys. So like to to regain that passion, you have to ground yourself, steady yourself. Ah! Uh, you don't get it back. You see how it works there? Oh, uh, man, that's... That's actually... Symbolism. Ah, <laughs> uh, you see, that's what I love about trying to talk about, about literature. It doesn't English matter papers. if you... It doesn't matter if it was intended to put there. If you can word it right and it makes sense, then yeah, it is there. Whether or not the author intended for it or not. Which I, I know I'm saying, like, kind of sarcastically, because I am. But I actually do find it interesting that other people can find something that was put into a work that you didn't intend to have put in there, if that makes sense. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, Saved it. So That's yeah, so basic. <laughs> like this, yeah, because you have to use the extra height you get from the gust of wind to actually get there. Ah, hey, yep. oh, damn it. Damn it. <laughs> That's weird. I, I'm one of those guys who can just switch between the two on a dime. It, it does depend on the game for me. Especially. Wait, are we there yet? Yeah, we're there. Yes, Lewis, we're there. <laughs> I don't have to pull this car around. You drove a car all the way up a mountain? That's that's impressive. We drove a boat up the mountain in Pokemon. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> no, you're not at the top yet. You have to climb on top of the flagpole. <laughs> and then Nana and Puppet just climb up the other side. <laughs> a pterodactyl's just going to kidnap her. <laughs> It's okay, I'll talk to you in the middle of the night when you talk, figure out that, oh, you said a mean thing about Jeremy in second grade, and you should feel really, really bad about that right now. Now we came to an understanding. That won't happen anymore. Are you sure? You really won't? Pinky swear. <laughs> Aww. Aww. This is my OTP. Madeline X Madeline. I look. <laughs> <laughs> this Don't is... believe in yourself. Believe in the me that believes in you. You see, this is the non meme tastic actual moral of the story, <laughs> though. Uh. Oh, this game is beautiful, though. I really do recommend it to every anybody who likes platformers even a little bit. You should give it a shot. Took me 27 this, minutes. This was a good game story. So, yeah. That's cute. <laughs> uh, Demon Madeline still terrifies me, though. And Madeline, you uh, know you could just ahead. use the level select code to get down, right? <laughs> Oh, where, where would be the fun in that? Well, the fun was getting up the mountain. Getting down is the heart is the boring part. I don't know. They look like they're having fun. I don't really snowboarding down. And back into the hut we go. After game party. Yeah. Man, we're gonna we're gonna bake a cake and it's gonna come from. A, wait, sorry. No, not a cake, a pie. Ah, oh, okay. See, not a rip out, rip off. Ten out of ten. Only you had a smart one, you could have taken a picture. Oh yeah, no, Theo says that you could have taken the ult <laughs> the ultimate selfie. Yeah. Be... <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. The demon strawberry demon Madeline can use her hair, so does that mean that Shantae is actually an anxiety demon this entire time? Purple hair that can manifest itself, huh? <laughs> huh? I've cracked the code, ladies and gentlemen. I have cracked. Solved the code. it. <laughs> 